Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I wanted to talk to you about memoizing functions in F Sharp. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of memoization, I'd recommend looking at the Wikipedia article for it, or maybe a blog post or a paper on it. But basically, to summarize it for the sake of this video, memoization is a way to make functions remember previous answers. So this is exceptionally useful when you have a function that might be very computationally intensive or just require a lot of work or have a complex thing that it needs to do and you don't want to do that complex thing over and over again. So basically it's a way of saving off answers. To show you memoization and to illustrate memoization, I'll use the quintessential function for functional programming examples, Fibonacci's. So Fibonacci, if you're not familiar with it, I'd look it up as well. It's an interesting function. Basically, it's going to say, if you gave me one, I'll give you back one. If you give me two, I'll give you back one. And if you give me anything else, I'll give you back the last fib. It's the fib before the, the nth fib, if you will, plus the one before that. This function has some interesting properties. I won't go into them here, but I'll show you why this is an interesting function for memoization. So if you say fibs of one, you just get back a good old one, fibs of 10, maybe a little interest, more interesting, 55, all right. If I say fibs of 42, fibas of 42, you'll notice it takes a little bit longer. Now, if I were to say fibs of 50, it will take a time that is longer than I am willing to put into this video. So memoization will come to our aid because you notice inherently this function is recursive. It, know, it needs previous answers in order to get the current answer for anything but one and two, which are kind of boring cases. So to do memoization, typically you have what's called a memo table memo equal and I'm just going to use a map. A map in F sharp is like a dictionary in other languages, also called a hash in Ruby or a hash map in Java. But I'm not just going to use a map. I'm going to break functional purity here just a little bit and I'm going to make this a ref to a map where a ref is something that I can change if you will. So let's use that memo table to build a new version of the Fibonacci function that is memoized. So let rec memoized, memoized fibs of n equal. Now, basically the algorithm for Fibonacci is not gonna change here. We're gonna use the exact same algorithm. We're just gonna put a little bit of logic around it in order to remember past answers and look up past answers. So basically the, the real fundamental principle here is that if the map contains the current n we're looking for, so if you already know the answer to the problem, if you already contain n in the memo, and since we're using a ref, you use the bang operator to dereference the ref or actually look at the value, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look up or find n in the memo. And that's our return value. Now, otherwise, if it doesn't contain the key, well, what we have to do is we have to calculate the result as we would for this version of the function. So let's actually steal the same code, uh, except, of course, we're not going to get the benefits of our memoized fib if we use the old fibs. So let's call memoized fibs instead of the old version of fibs. All right. And when we calculate the new result, we have to remember the new result. So let's reset our value of our memo table to the map.add of n to result. So if you look up n in the memo table, you'll get back the result that we just calculated. And then let's return back the newly calculated result. All right, so it's pretty straightforward, I think. If you look here, you'll notice this logic is pretty much the same as what you see above. We've just got a little bit of boilerplate around it to remember previous values and look up previous values and ask if we've seen a value in the past. So let's send this file again to FSI and let's run our new version of memoized fibs or our new version of fibs that is memoized rather. Let's run it on 42 and you'll see that that's the same answer. If we call 
just normal FIPS. But you notice it was much faster. And it's one of those kind of functions that since it's remembering previous answers, it will only get faster the more novel values we call it with. And its behavior is really, really super fast. We can even give it larger numbers, like here's 213. Uh, and you notice that's getting to be a really long number. And now you notice I've gone negative because we overflowed the range of possible values. But overall, you'll notice it's, it's pretty lightning fast. It's almost, in a way, like magic. Now, this is interesting and useful, and I'd say this is good enough to do a basic memoization, but sometimes what you wanna do is you wanna just have a way to say, given a function, let me just memoize it. Let me just turn a normal function, which doesn't remember its answers, into one that does remember its answers. So what we're gonna to do to do that is we're gonna make a new function, let, and this is just gonna be called memoize. And memoize is gonna be a higher order function. It's gonna accept a function as an argument and I'll just call that function f. And basically it's gonna be the boilerplate we see around here. The things that help us do memoization. But the interesting thing that's gonna happen here is we're gonna define our memo table inside the scope of this function. So let lemma, memo also be a ref map. And you gave me f, which is the function that you want me to make memoized or to memoize. So I'll give you back a new function, which will take in some arg, and it'll, it'll basically serve as a different version of f, which can be memoized. So this is a little more generic, basically. We're taking this pattern here, and we're extracting it out. So instead of asking about n, we've asked about arg. All right, nothing too much going on there. Instead of doing this very specific computation here, we should call the function that was given to us, f of arg, and this is also arg. And there you have it. We kind of have extracted out the notion of memoizing into a function called memoize, which transforms a function um, into a version that remembers its answers. And it's pretty much that simple. So let's redefine fibs again and I'll call this final fibs. And basically final fibs is gonna take an N and it is also gonna be recursive. And this is gonna to come together in a really cool way because we want to memoize a function that takes an N. And actually we have N in both places here which isn't gonna work for us. So let's get rid of the top N. And in the end, it's going to do almost exactly the same thing fibs did the original fibs, except it should call out to final fibs. And that's why we had to make it recursive. So at this point, we've kind of generalized the concept of memoization and made it so we can basically memoize anything we want. And it's really, if you, let me pull this example up here next to it. If you look, there's not a whole lot more to this function than there is just to the original form. So we've kind of really harnessed some of the power of functional programming and transforming functions. You can think of memoize as being a function which takes a function and transforms it into one that remembers its answers. So just to prove that I'm not lying, let's run it really quick. Let's run memoized fibs, which was our middle one. Memoized fibs on 42. Let's run fibs on 42. Watch it take a little while. Oops, sorry about that. It's a long. Takes a moment to figure out its answer. And then let's run final fibs, the one we just find on 42. Awesome. You may notice this memoize function returns a function and only takes a function that has one arg. We could use a trick called currying to make it so this function could, we can memoize any arguments, any number of arguments to a function. If you'd like to learn more about that, feel free to comment below. But for now, I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching. Uh, below in the description, I'll put links to this code and also maybe some links to some articles on memoizing.